Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech, and today we are going to be taking a look at the Ender 5 by Creality. So let's get started. <laughs> So I want to thank Creality for sending the Ender 5 over to me for review. I've been actually looking for an upgrade to my printer, which is currently a Prusa i3 clone. And I've been using that since 2014, 2013. And it's definitely time for an upgrade. I will leave a link in the description below to where you can get this guy. I've been debating between the Ender 3 or the Ender 5 as far as an upgrade. The Ender 3 is very similar to the Prusa i3s, while the Ender 5 is a bigger base and bigger overall print size as well. So the print size on this guy is 220 by 220 by 300. The Ender 5 actually has the best value for the lineup in the Ender series. It's got the bigger size and it's not that much money from the Ender 3. So if you're looking into upgrading your printer, Ender 5 might be a better choice. But if you already have an Ender 3, then I might as well just stay with the Ender 3 because most of the components from the Ender 5 is similar to the Ender 3 other than the actual frame and the print bed size. Now this thing's definitely well built. It's on, uh, you could say this is the 8020 frames, the aluminum frames. And I could actually move this around without having to readjust my bed level. On my old printer, I can. Anytime I have to move it around, I have to readjust everything because stuff just moves around. This is very solid and it doesn't have that problem. When this showed up on my doorstep, it was actually a part, so I had to build it. And here's a time lapse of me building it. And it didn't, it wasn't too hard. The instructions were very easy to follow. And it took about half an hour or so just to put everything together. Now, a couple of things I did have to fix as soon as I put this together was one of the end stops on the Y axis. I had to readjust it to push it a little bit more forward because it wasn't touching the actual uh, trigger. And two, uh, since this is US, we need 110 voltage, not 220. And when it came shipped, it was set to 220 and I didn't even think about it. As soon as I powered it on, it would shut off. And just to fix that problem, you just have to switch it back to 110. So keep that in mind that, that is, there is that option. A couple of issues that I did have with this printer as far as building is this X cable. Um, it seems to be dangling right off the side. Um, I could actually put it inside the frame, but I left it on the outside and that probably was a bad choice because every time when I move the frame all the way to the end or this access, the X access to the end, this seems to get caught on the extruder motor and it would unplug the X access and then that's it, my print's done. It's not recoverable. So I will eventually move this to the inside, but I am afraid if I do move it to the inside, it might cause a problem with triggering the Y axis. So zip tying is not an option as well. Um, I did zip tie it to the actual part where I would put my filament, but I can't zip tie it up to the top because it doesn't, the, the Y is just not long enough to reach that way. Now the extruder is a Bowden extruder where the extruder motor is actually not on the head itself, which does help with the quality of prints because you're not, you don't have this heavy weight like the direct drives does. There's some pros and cons between that. Some pros is that the, uh, this is, you will get a much better print without all that wobble or the, the Z wobble. With the direct drive, it's more powerful so I could actually push different types of material using the direct drive instead of this. Like if I was to use Ninja Flex on this, since there's so, so much travel, the retraction rate on the Ninja Flex might not be as direct as if I was to use a direct drive. And to print Ninja Flex on this, I think it would be a lot slower process, probably 30 millimeters per second or maybe 20. Not too sure yet because I haven't tried Ninja Flex on this. Otherwise, the whole build was very simple. I, I, I'm actually impressed how they actually got the Y axis to use one motor instead of two. So another thing about this printer is that it does print PLA. Um, the bed does reach past 100 degrees so you should be able to print abs but because of this magnetic bed the magnetic bed can only take 80 degrees celsius which means ultimately you cannot print abs with this guy which is fine for me because my prusa i3 will still be doing the heavy task of different types of materials like abs and stuff all right so let's talk about print quality uh, the first thing i did was use their configuration settings without having to uh, adjust anything and print a 3d benchy and this is the result it actually came out pretty bad you could see it's over extruding all over the place. It's having a lot of stringing and it's printing stuff where it's not supposed to and it didn't come out good. So I quickly realized, okay, this thing needs to be calibrated. So I spent some time calibrating this guy 
and I swapped out the filament because white is so hard to fit, uh, see on camera. So my initial print of the straining test, as you can see, is garbage. It, it, it was horrendous and it was under extruding and you can see how disgusting this is. It doesn't even print out nicely. It had some stringing issues. It has some blobbing. The strings actually fell off, but uh, it had some blobbing issues, which leads me to calibrate a lot more. I actually needed to go into the firmware and change the extrusion rate, and I had to calculate that, and it was definitely under extruding. Uh, I had to figure out the flow rate, retraction rate, uh, heat, a, a lot of things. Basically, the full calibration on this unit I had to redo. And then the results are this. You can see this is way much better quality on this stringing test. Uh, there's no stringing except for the little string on top and a hair of little bit of string on the bottom when it first initi initiated the, the rings. Then I went ahead and printed another 3D Benchy. Now this came out a lot better than the first one, but still had stringing issues. And that's, I think is really due to the humidity in this basement that I'm having right now. It's midsummer. Well, it's almost to the end of the summer and every day has been so humid. Unless I take my filament and actually like throw it in the oven and bake it for like a couple of hours. I think I'm going to have this stringing issue with that. And if you guys follow me on my community hub where I would post stuff, I will print it. Once it gets, the humidity gets down to a tolerable rate, I will try to reprint it and see if the string comes back. Now, I also swapped out the filament again to do a speed test because uh, I needed some more of a translucent, which I ended up using this one and it's red. Now, every five millimeter, the speed changes. So it started off from 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, then 100. And you can see that the first three levels, 50, 60, 70, printed out great. And then at 80, 90, and 100, it started to uh, have some artifacts in there. It wasn't printing as clean. So this printer can only print as, at a maximum speed of 70. Doing any more might result in quality loss. Here's another print that I did with a Pokemon, a low poly po uh, Pokemon. And like I said, this is more of a translucent so I could see what's going on inside. And it is hollow. I didn't, I didn't print an infill. And you can see it printed out really nice. The lines came out perfect. I didn't have any artifacts or any issues with it. So ultimately in the end, this printer is really good. I just like how stable it is and, and being the frame is all aluminum, it's actually very sturdy and I'm able to, like I said, move it around. In conclusion, I do recommend this guy. There are a lot of upgrades that you could do to fix the Z-wobble and a bunch of stuff which I will be putting on my channel. I will also recommend using OctoPrint so you could actually wirelessly connect to this guy. There's some mods where you could actually stick a Raspberry Pi underneath the controller board so I'll, I might be doing that as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about this printer, hit up in the comments below. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say in my Nerd Cave, hack till it hurts.